So this lesson will be, um, well it is screen recorded so I'll get you to keep your mics off for now and you can put your mic on and answer questions but I would leave your cameras off um, just in case I end up catching one years on the camera and the video. Um, so as I was saying before on the classroom post and emails you'll need a bit of blank music like this if you've not then try and copy it out as you go you'll need if you're copying on a blank paper you'll need to draw the stave and all your bar lines there so that would give you one full complete line on my music I've got nine lines you might not need line, nine lines if you're copying it out um, on blank paper and you'll need a ruler, a decent pen, I find sort of handwriting pens are very good, ink uh, sort of gel pens and uh, I have a whiteboard marker, I've got two here uh, but I usually use a whiteboard marker for doing note heads if I'm not writing busy busy amounts of notes. If I'm writing loads and loads of notes then I would need to use um, just a normal pen to write the note heads to make them smaller. So we're going to go for it, okay? So, if you've never written music before, uh, we're going to cover it today. We're going to talk about how you write music in the simplest term, as in basically being able to draw notes. And we're also going to talk about um, how it adds up to the beats and such like. So I'm not going to worry about double bar lines or things like that for now. I'm just going to dive in and for the sake of arguments, I'm going to make this first line a 2-4. Okay, so you draw that in just now. You would normally have a treble clef here and you would have double bar lines here. But I'm not going to worry about that for now. Alright, so this is where you can either use your whiteboard pen or your dabbing pen or you can use any other uh, or normal pen. If you've not got a whiteboard pen, then draw the note head with a circle. Um, this is where you'll see, I've just done a note head there. Easy peasy with a whiteboard pen. So I'm just gonna do two note heads, one above the line and one below the line. And again, as I said before, if you find that this is flipped round on the video, this is the top left of my sheet, so it looks like the top right, but it's actually the top left. Okay. So to draw a crotch chip, I always move the ruler about maybe centimetre and a half, we'll say. You don't need to measure it like that, alright, but it's roughly about that far. Underneath the left hand note, and I always make sure that the, light, the ruler is dead straight, and all I do is on the left hand side of the note I'll just do a straight line like that and then on this one I'll do the same a straight line all right going down onto the ruler so I don't worry about doing a straight line like this and like that okay you end up not with a perfectly straight line but it's straight enough that it looks really neat and accurate so that's how I would write music if I was doing crotchets so I've done two crotchets there easy peasy and we should remember, if we think back to our music writing lessons, that there's two beats per bar, and each beat needs to equal a crotchet. And this was our time signature lesson. So the top number told us it was two beats per bar. So one, two, that was our two beats, counting to two. One, two. If it was a faster tune, one, two. It's two beats. And each of those beats, those beats that I was tapping there, need to equal a crotchet. And you can see here, I've written two crotchets, so that bar is absolutely complete. In the next bar, I'm going to take that crotchet and split it in half. So can anyone tell me what I get when I split, split one crotchet in half? I'll get two notes. I think you need to tell me what they are. Two whats? Two quavers, Emily. Well done. So I'm going to do two note heads here with my dabbing pen and I'm going to make them quaver so again I'm doing the ruler underneath the notes 
and I'll do my two stems and instead of doing two separate tails I'm joining them together like that okay that little line there all right it's called a beam and I'm going to do a wee arrow and I'm going to write beam next to it all right because that might be something that you've maybe not covered or not spoken about my bee looks wild there sorry beam all right so a beam equals a tail so if you see a note that's got or two notes like that that have got one beam joining them means these two notes are quavers all right so one beam is one tail two beams would be two tails to make them semi-quavers three beams would be three tails to make them demi semi quavers so for those who don't have a dabbing pen like that i'm going to draw a crotchet here and i'm going to draw it without the dabbing pen so all i would do if i was doing big notes like this is i would draw a circle and i would color it in or fill it in just like that and then i get in i'll get my ruler straight line and that's it okay and you'll either enjoy writing music or it'll stress you out um, not in terms of adding it up and making it musically accurate but just in terms of writing and drawing i find writing music by hand very relaxing like really relaxing some folk find it a stress um, and they prefer to use the computer to do their music writing with various music writing software that you can get it's faster doing it on the computer, but I find it more relaxing. Okay, so if we were to play this, all right, you can draw this on if you want, but if we were to play this group of notes, it would be one, two, one, and two. That's how we would play it. So that would be the first beat, which is one. Second beat is two. First beat's one. Second beat's two. But we've split this beat in half. So it's now one and two. Okay, and I can see that my numbers look a wee bit skew with. Oh, it kind of looks like a Z. That's definitely a two. My next group, Neve's in. All right, so Neve, when you're in, leave your mic off. All right, and you as well turn your camera off as well, I would say, purely because I'm re screen recording this one. Okay, Craig, you're the same. Try keep your mic and camera off just because I'm screen recording this one. All right, so in my next group, I'm going to do four semi-quavers because I know when I split these two quavers in half, they're going to make four semis. So I'm going to do it starting on the left this time. And again, I'll use my wee dab and pen. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And notice how I'm trying to keep it to this half of the bar. I'm not spreading all four of them right out because I know that's the first beat. I've got you need space for the second beat, aren't I? So again, I'll get my ruler and I'm lining it up with this beam in the bottom of the crotchets. So I know that it's going to be the same length when I draw it. So one, two, three, four, and a little line across. Okay. So I've now got one, two, three, four quavers because it's got one beam. Remember the beam equaled a tail. So I need to make a second beam. So I'll just move the ruler up a little bit and draw in my second beam. So now I've got four semi-quavers. And I'm just gonna write here, whilst you copy that out, okay? One, one beam, or one beam equals one tail. All right, so if you've got two beams, it's two tails on the notes. So that there would be one, two, three, four semi-quavers. If you're writing them individually, you would do it with the two tails on each one of them. But we don't need to because they're all in one group. All right, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now this time, I want to mix it up and you should be copying it as we go. In fact, I'm going to, in fact, I'll do that after. Um, we're going to mix it up a little bit. Instead of just doing quavers or semi-quavers, I want to do a mixture of semi-quavers and quavers. So if I was playing this group, it's one, E, and A. 
that's how we would count that one knee under. Now I only want to play one knee and this time. That's all I want to play is one knee and. So I need to get rid of the A ah on the next group. So I know that it's going to fit in this bar or this space. So I'll do the one E and. I'll do the note heads for it. And I know they're all in the same group. So I'm going to do my stems and I'll do one beam for now. Okay. So if I think one E and, all right, how am I going to group that up? I'm going to loop back to what I've already written. So the and in this group is a quaver. One and two, one and two. So that one can stay as a quaver. These two, I'm going to beam up. So I end up with this. All right, and again, write it out with me as you're going, so you get a shot of doing this. So now I've got one E and a. These two is the two E, and that would be the and. One E and a, two E and, and because it's a quaver, one and, two E and. I've got a little space, not to look at, but to play before I get to here. And I'm going to finish it off with two crotchets. And I'll get used to do that as well. And snare drummers, you're probably thinking, well, that doesn't look like snare drum music. It looks a bit more like tenor drum music. It kind of does. All right. However, this is our, the, the most basic form of writing music, and it's the easiest way to learn to write music, I would say is not, not only being able to write it and draw it, but being able to count it. One knee and a two knee and, and this would be one, two. Easy as that, okay? So if I was going to, let's say, make this slightly harder, so for the, the snare drummers amongst us, tenor drummers, you might find a lot of your music looks similar to this, although it might be a bit busier, where I've written the ones and twos and e the ands and stuff, you might have flourishing symbols there, or your music will be coloured in to say that's the group of notes you play, that's the group of notes your pal plays. For snare drummers, our music will look like this, all right, but it might be like this. So I'm going to take that last group of notes, and I've put a roll sign on there. So for the advanced drummers here, that's called a roll sign. A roll mark and I'm just putting what's called a tie and a bind over those two notes so that looks more familiar to the snare drummers you'll see that and you'll be like well I'm rolling from that beat to that beat so that can only be either a nine stroke roll or a 13 stroke roll depending on the speed we're playing the tune if it's quite slow it has to be a 13 if it's quite fast so if it's a strispe that would be a nine Does that does that, we don't have enough time to fit a 13 in there. It's far too fast. All right, if it's a bit slower, it has to be a 13. A 9 would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. You'd have big spaces in your buzzes. Also, for me to beef this up a bit, I could make this note an accent. So I've just put a wee accent over that note. I could put a roll sign on this one and a slur or a tie. That makes that a seven stroke roll now. I could put a flam on here. I could put a flam on there if I wanted. So instead of just one, two, one and two, one knee and a two e and one, two. I've now got flam, flam, seven stroke roll, tap. In fact, I'm gonna make that a flam. Beef it up a bit. So it's flam, flam, Seven stroke roll, flam, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, higgity, diggity, dock. And I'll put an accent on the end of the roll, and I'm going to put an expression mark there. So can anyone tell me what they think that expression mark is, or what it's called? It starts with K, 
and see if anyone can get this. I'd be surprised if anyone does, if you've not written music Crescendo. before. Crescendo, Aaron, yep. So it means starting soft and gradually getting louder. Okay. If the arrow was going the other way, it would mean diminuendo, which is loud going to soft. Okay. And I wouldn't need to do anything else to that. Normally, when you're writing music, you wouldn't have the one, twos, one and twos on this. All right, I've just put them on just so you can see it and get a feel for what I'm trying to do. All right. So that is music writing in its most basic form. Okay, and we're going to have a go at doing a couple more of them. And I've got a little example that I'm going to share with you just now. So this is me on my iPad. Oh yeah, that's proof that I'm on my iPad, just so you can see what I'm writing. So can you all move to the next line of your music? All right, and what I mean by next line is on the next blank line. Don't copy in my scribbles, all right? I'm just scribbled out some music that I've written before, just so you can't see it, okay? And then on your music, draw your treble clef. Also draw your double dot or double bar lines. Which are those. And also draw in the time signature, which is your 2 4 that we're going to work, work on just now. Okay, so if you do that just now. And I'm going to go fairly quickly through this. All right. So, our first note that we're going to draw, I'll cover that one up, is a crotchet on the right hand. So if you draw that in just now, doing using the exact same method that we used before, we will either use your dabber, or just draw a circle and colour it in, and then draw your stem underneath it. So that's a crotchet. What hand's that written on, anyone? Right. Yep, so above the line is the right hand. Excellent. So that'll just be a tap. And if you want to, you can do this. You can write one above it, if you want. You don't have to, but you can if you want. Because it's a beat on its own, we know that's all we're playing. And our next group, we're going to do a crotchet as well. And if the first one was on the right, what would the next one be? Below the line is left. left hand. Excellent, well done. So same as before, that first group's going to be one, that next group's going to be two. And you don't have to write that just now if you don't want to. Okay? But that's just a nice wee reference for you. So that's quite easy. Our next group you're going to write is two quavers. And remember we said that that was called a beam. And one beam equaled one tail. So these two notes here, if you copy them in, again, do your note head, put your ruler here and draw your line straight down. If those notes were written individually without the beam, it would look like this. Two quavers like that. But again, it looks quite... I find when I'm writing music, if I've written it like that, it wouldn't be wrong, but it's quite hard to follow if you're looking specifically at the groups. All right, so I can see that that notes are grouped together. All right, so I know it's part of the first beat of that bar. Whereas if I've seen this, because I've done this for a while, I'll know that they're two quavers and equal a crotchet, but sometimes it's quite tricky to follow that. All right, so I would rather see it beamed all the time. And our next group, we're obviously going quite easy here, is a crotchet. So just again, just draw that in. So far now we've got one, two, one, and two. 
very very easy so far all right i'm going to be very disappointed if the next group's the same as the example group that i drew before i'll be gutted with myself let's have a look oh man it's the exact same so what notes are these anyone what note values are those Anyone? Are they crotchets? Quaver. Quavers? Uh, quaver. Nope, uh, semi-quavers. All right, these are semi-quavers because they've got one, two lines, or two beams. All right, so remember your beams represent tails. So that's what those notes are. There's four of them. One, two, three, four. That's what they are. All right, they're semi-quavers. And uh, that's my daughter coming home. So she, again, same chat every week. She might pipe up and burst in here. So they're semi-quavers, okay? If I hide these two, these two added up equal a quaver. If I bring these ones back in and add them up, they equal a quaver. If I add these two quavers together, I get a crotchet. And that equals my beat note. All right, you don't need to draw this as well, but that's me just showing you how it all adds up. Okay. And I'll rub that out. And I could, again, if I wanted to be fancy, I could do an accent there. If I wanted, I could put a flam on here if I wanted. I mean, that's me just being fancy. But you really, really don't need to for now. All right, we're going to do that in some of the other lines so let's rub out the next little bit it's, oh, excellent it's not the exact same as before which is good so what are these two notes what note values are they quavers quavers excellent the reason i know they're quavers is because it's got one beam which I said before, which means it equals one tail on each of those notes. All right, so that would be the first one's a quaver, the second one's a quaver. So it's two quavers. And again, if I add them up, two quavers equal one single crotchet. So we already done a sum for these notes earlier and it equaled a crotchet. So that's your first crotchet and your second crotchet. And remember before we said everything in every bar needs to equal two crotchets, or there's two beats per bar, and every value, every beat is equal to a crotchet. So the four was telling us that it's a quarter note. So every single bar, there's a bar, there's a bar, there's a bar. Every single one of them needs to equal a crotchet, okay? So you can write whatever you want in every bar within reason, all right, but it has to add up to a crotchet. And you'll see sometimes when folk are writing, say I'm gonna write, um, say I'm gonna write in this bar here, okay? A lot of folk, before they do, they'll do like a little thin dot with a pencil, all right? And they'll maybe do a thin dot there with a pencil. And then they'll go to write whatever they're writing. So let's just quickly scribble in that. I know that that equals a crotchet. And I'm going to do a group that we've done earlier. And again, I'm just going very quick with the Apple Pencil here. So I know that those two added up equal a crotchet. These two added up equal a quaver. Added to that quaver there equals a crotchet as well. All right, so once I'd done that, I could rub out all of this, I could rub out that, and I could also rub out my dotted line. All right, and that's not a bad way of going about it. All right, you see that quite a lot. I can hear my daughter crying just outside. Um, our mum's there, don't stress. All right, so that's a good way of going about it. If you're going to sit at home and potentially practice this and have a go at it yourself, 
And the last bar, let's see what's here. We're going for a crotch it by the looks of it. So that's a crotch it, we'll draw that. And it's below the line, so it says to me it's on the left hand. And I'm gonna have a guess and see what I've written here. Yeah, crotch it on the right. So that would be left hand, right hand. And that would be one, two. Notice as well, <clears throat> I've got a repeat mark or a double dotted double bar line. You'll need to draw that as well. Okay. So you've got your first one here, second one there, which tells me that I'll play all of this. Play, 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 play. When I get to the end, I'll go back to the start and play it again. Okay. So let's count out these notes. So I had one, two, one and two and the next one's one e and a two and one two that's how we would count that out okay and you don't have to be able to count it to write it you don't have to be able to count it to play it all right but if you're a younger drummer or one of the beginner drummers this will be very familiar to you all right, or if you're doing the level two exercises with me at school, again, this is going to be very familiar because we've done this loads. I've not got a drum pad here, but I could clap it out for you. It would be one, two, one, and two, one, the and a two, and one, two. And repeat it is one, two, one, and two, one, the and a two, and one, two. And that's it. Okay, and you guys will probably be thinking that's quite easy. All right, for snare drummers, counting out rhythms like that is extremely easy. All right, it's very, very easy. For pipers, nah, pipers find it very tricky. All right, because they won't just have a tap and a tap and a tap, tap, tap. They can't do that. All right, their playing is just constant. All right, so they'll have instead of the one line. They would have a second, third, fourth, fifth line, and their notes will maybe be like this. All right, just constant. So they would have na 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 that sort of idea, and it would just be a constant sound. But as for us, right, we've got spaces between the notes everywhere, as you can see here. All right, we've only got two hands and two drumsticks. So there are going to be constant spaces in the sound. So that for us is actually quite easy. It makes things a lot easier instead of just being, trying to think, well, it's just constant sound. You're, how long are you holding this note for? When we hold a note, say we've got a crotchet to another crotchet, we do hold that, but it's not a held or sustained note. It's not going constantly from here to here as one sound. All right, we would play this tap and then we wait however long it is before we play that tap. Okay, and this is where we might play about with it. Remember I was saying you can do roll signs. All right, instead of just doing a tap there and a tap there, we're now rolling from this note to that note. Okay, and like I did before, you can play about with it. I could put an accent there, I could put a roll sign and make that a seven. I could make this a right, left, right accent to draw, which a lot of you will have seen. Um, what's it called? Rat and Robin Robin. I could take that crotchet there. I'm gonna dissect it, it's a bit tight for space, but I'll do it anyway. You wouldn't normally do this because it's quite tight for space, but I could change that. To this. All right, and that now becomes tap buzz buzz, tap buzz buzz, one, two, three, four, five. And I could put an accent there. And this is gonna give you a little insight to potentially how easy it is to write music on it, because music writing, as I rub out all those bits, essentially starts with this. Just little groups of notes, and you can play about with it however you want. All right, and this is where this video is going to be quite good because if you've got, um, you won't have this copy of music here, 
but I could easily send it on the classroom or if you're watching on the YouTube channel, I could email it or you could write it out yourself and on this blank line, you could write out the same and just mess about with it or you could say, and I'm going to write it just now, I could do that crotchet but take that one and put it above the line instead and I could make it a roll. I could take this one here and keep it the same, but make it a roll. Take that one, make it a flam. These ones, I could swap the hands. So instead of left, right, left, right, left, I'm going to make it right, left, right, right, which makes it a paradiddle now. Accent the second tap just because I can. I could make this one a left seven stroke roll. And just to keep it easy, keep these last two as crotchets, but put a flam on them. So this now becomes a 13 stroke roll, so it's hickory dickory dock, 7 stroke roll, flam, para did, or 7 stroke roll, flam, flam. And I don't have enough space to do this, alright, but if I did, I could make them dots and cuts, which is quite tricky to see. Alright, so this paradiddle now, this one here, becomes paradiddle instead of paradiddle. So you can see how I'm literally just playing about with it and having a bit of fun with it. Alright, and again, if you feel like you're comfortable and confident enough to do that, then go for it. Alright, because music writing, it's literally just practice. Alright, you're practicing it giving it a go and seeing how you get on with it. All right. And if you're, I was going to say, if you're lucky enough for me to teach you, you might think that you're not lucky enough for me to teach you. But if I teach you in schools, all right, or outside the school, then I'm more than happy to help how I can. Okay. Right. Let's do the next group. So it's going to be a three, four. So if you draw in your treble clef and draw in your repeat mark, and drawing the time signature. So as you're doing that, I'm going to explain. Remember the three on the time signature tells us the amount of beats per bar. So every single beat is going to have, or every single bar is going to have three beats. All right, so it needs to count up one, two, three. Every single bar needs to count up to that. And the bottom number four tells you the value of each of those beats or every beat. So the value of every beat is going to be four. And you're thinking, well, what does the four mean? Think back to the duration table. All right, when we had the highest note at the very, very top was our semi breathe. And then we split it in half and we had two minims. So remember the semi B was the whole note. The next one down was the half note or the minim. And then the next one down from that, if I draw in quickly, remember where our minims, I'll just draw it here. The next one down were our crotchets. All right, which were called the quarter notes. Notice how I'm circling the four there. That's where the four comes from. All right, so the four in our time signature there is that four. All right, so let me get rid of all of that. And I'll rub it out because it's getting a bit mucky. Give me my space back. That's what we've got. So let's rub out. The first, in fact, let's go back. In fact, I can't go back. Let's colour that back in. We'll go one group at a time. So we're going to draw in the first group. All right, and notice that I've made it quite small. All right, because I've got, if I do my dots here, that first group would need to fit in this space here. 
Okay, and I'm scribbling it with my Apple Pencil. You guys would be getting your ruler out like that. Remember we were saying before, you would have your straight line there. All right, so if I was doing it here, my pen is going to reach that line like that and go across. All right, and it won't look as good when I'm using the pencil and the ruler on the screen. Looks okay, but it won't look as neat as yours will. All right, but that's just a reminder of what you would do with your ruler. So we've got our two, cro two clavers there. That's our first group. Let's rub out the next group and see what we've got. Four semi-clavers. That'll be your next group. And again, remember we had our dots here. Or you don't have to have your dots, but you're going to fit those notes into that space. All right, so don't spread them out too much. You need to fit in that space. In fact, I'm just going to draw those ones back in. And our next group, just a crotch it, easy peasy. So you draw that in as well. And again, try using your dabber, if you've got a dabber. If you've not, just draw the note head in with your pen and then color it in with your ruler sitting there. Draw your straight line down and you're done. And if you are using dots at this point, this is when you would rub out your dotted line and you would be left with that. Okay, and yours will look way neater than my one there, or it should do, all right, because I can't really use the ruler properly on the pen, on the iPad. I reckon I will be able to with a bit of practice, but I've not had time to do that practice. So let's move on, next group. Two quavers, let's draw them in. And I'm going to do the little dots just for now so you can again get a feel for what I'm doing. It's left and right. Two quavers, which could be said to be one and, if you're counting the notes. And then let's see what our next group is. What do I think is going to be? Just a crotch it. Easy peasy on the left hand. Let's draw that in. And again, this is your first stab at music writing. So please take your time. Don't rush and start scribbling it in like this. And just making it really untidy. All right, try and make it as neat as you can. Because uh, eventually when you write music, you'll potentially be able to do it. And again, this isn't a great example, but you might be able to end up doing it freehand where you don't need a ruler. Because right, this won't look absolutely awful. It's not the neatest. All right, but I've seen folk write music like that. And it's, it's not stinking. All right, but it's better to use a ruler. Certainly when I'm writing music by hand, I'll always use a ruler. And like I said before, I'll have it there. Let's see if this will work. I'll do my note heads. And I'll just do a straight line down. And the line across doesn't really work that well. But even then, that looks better straight away than it did when I didn't use a ruler. So let's find out what the third group is. Easy. All right, it's just another crotch it. So make sure you draw that in the now. So I've now got one and two e and a three. All right. So notice because it's three beats per bar, I'm counting to three. Quavers one and two, three. If the quavers were here in the third group. These quavers would then be free and. All right, it's always going to be free if it's the third group. If it's the second group, it would be two and. If it's the first group, it would be one and. Oh, geez, oh, that was awful. Let's make that near. And time's getting on, so let's do. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Can anyone tell me what that is? Uh, 
Yeah, it's a flan. All right. Oh, geez. Oh. So we're drawing flans now. All right, we must be feeling a bit mental. So let's draw it in. So before I draw the actual flam itself, I always draw the note in which the flam is going to be written on. So you can see these two here, they're actually quavers, and it's one on the right, second one on the right. So I would draw them in first. So I would actually draw that. In fact, let me just tidy that up. There. I would draw that first. I can just hear my daughter going mental next door. And then I would draw the flam. So the flam, as you can see, it's a smaller dot or note head. And then the line goes up and across. And I just do a wee swoosh like that. All right, so these two notes, let me use a different color, are your flam. And when you're counting up for note write, music writing purposes, you're counting that note there as a quaver, that note as a quaver. You're not counting that one. All right, so don't count the flam. All right, because it doesn't have a note value as such. All right, so you're not going to count that flam. All right, it's just those two quavers that you're counting. Okay. So we've now got a crotchet here as well, and it's rolling across. Little roll marks there, and for the observant folk amongst you. You might see that I've done two wee roll signs there. And on one of the notes earlier, I had three. So it would have looked like that. All right. The reason I've only got two is on a quaver and below. So a quaver, semi-quaver, and demi-semi-quaver. If you're putting a roll mark on any of them, it's two. Two roll marks, like one two on the note. If it's a crotchet and above, like this, you would have three. One, two, three. If it was a quaver like here, it's two. And that's for the super observant folk amongst us that might have spotted that. And let's rub out the rest of the bar. So it's a crotchet, and again, there's my crotchet, so I'm going to draw that first. And it's a flam. This is going to be interesting. Can anyone tell me what hand that flam's played on? So is it a right flam or a left flam? Is it right? Nope. Left. It's a left flam. Now, I'm going to explain why it's a left flam. So the flam embellishment is written on the left, um, sorry, on the right, and the note is written on the left. And you would think, well, if the embellishment's written on the right, it's actually a right flam. But if you were going to play it, all right, the first note is on the left, the second one's on the right, so the first half will be on the left, the second one will be on the right. So if you're going to play that with the first one on the left and the second one on the right, I'm oh, sorry, the first one on the right and the second one on the left. You're going to bring your left hand up. It's quite hard to envisage it, all right? But your left hand's going to play first. Oh, sorry, your right hand's going to play first. Your left hand will play second. So the, the second note's the biggest note. All right, so the hand that lifts up is the one that you would say, well, it's a right flam or a left flam. And again, the more you write this, the more you would get used to it. I'm not sure if I explained that very well. I kind of heard it back in my head. It didn't sound very clever. But when you're playing it, whatever hand is the high hand, that's the flam. And let's rub out this whole bar. And we're going to write this in a one -er. So we can see we've got right, left, right, right. That's just a paradiddle. Written as semi quavers. Right, left, right right and again i would be using my ruler straight down there's semi quavers i put an accent there and i've got a left seven stroke roll which is two quavers a little roll sign there and i've got a left tap 
there. Done. Easy peasy. Okay. So again, and I've oh, I've got the roll repeat marks. I forgot them almost. So that shows us how theoretically easier, tricky it is to write music. All right. So I'm going to rub out my effort here because I've still got the other one down here. Although you can't see that, I've still got it all there. All right. So when I rub out the other stuff, this one still stays, which is handy. All right. So I've just seen the time. We've not got much time left. PL for the win. Woo! So I'm going to rub out this entire line and see what we've got. All right, and let's talk through what we've got now. So I've written a 4-4. Four, four. So straight away there's going to be one, two, three, four groups per bar of four beats. Second bar, one, two, three, four. So there's the first beat, the second beat, third beat, fourth beat. In my first beat, I've got a crotchet roll. Second beat, I've got another crotchet roll. Third beat, I've got a crotchet on its own. And the next beat, I've got two quaver flams. So if I was going to play that, it would be dzz, dzz, dup. So that's a three pace roll. Dzz, up. Or if you're learning drum rolls, it's hickory dickory, hickory dickory dock. One, two, three. And number four is two quavers. So it'll be four and. And I've got them played as flams. So it'll be flam, flam. So I've got hickory dickory, hickory dickory dock. Flam, flam. That's my first bar. Okay, and again, you might be thinking, well, that's actually surprisingly easy. One, two, three, four, and that would be four and. So I've got one, two, three, four, and. If I was clapping out the rhythm, one, two, three is a row. Hickety dickety, hickety dickety, dock, flam, flam. All right. I'll rub that out. And I'm going to rub out the one, two, three, four. This might be a bit of a squeeze, all right, so I'm going to write it bigger, but this group here would be one, E, and, A, all right, because I know it's semi-quavers, all right, so if I tap them out, so you can see, first it would be one, E, and, A, and we've written it as paradiddle, so one, E, and, A. We'd become paradiddle. Notice it's in the exact same space as the one yanda. This next group is also the semi quavers, but because it's the second group, it becomes two e and a. That's what this second group is. Two e and a. Can anyone tell me what those two notes are? What are those two notes? Ignore the roll sign. Just look at the beam. There's one beam. So that tells me it's a specific type of note. Or it's got a name. Each one of those notes have got a name. Alright, I'm going to write... In fact, rub that Is it a quaver? Yeah, they're quavers. Yeah, because if I take this group of notes here and write it up here without the roll sign... It's just that. So it's two quavers. All I've done is done a wee roll mark and put the tire bind on it. That's all I've done. And then this last group here is a crotchet and I've just made it a flam because why not? So this group here would have been three and and then the last flam would have made it would have been four if we're counting in the beats. So if I get my wee bounce and note head, all right, all Disney styley, it would be one e and a two e and a three and four. That's what I end up with. 
and that's how you would play it. So it would end up para diddle para diddle seven stroke row flam. Because it all fits on that beat. You might be thinking, well, that's not free and, but it is. It's free and, free and, but I'm rolling over. So in the space of free and, I'm doing seven stroke row, free and, seven stroke row, free and. Fits in that space exactly. And then I've just finished the note, the group off with a flam. And then anyone tell me what that note value is? In fact, let me use a red pen so you can see it clearer. What note is that? Anyone? It starts with K. Crotchet. It's a crotchet. All right, so that's it there. The only difference is it's got the roll marks on it. Doesn't change the value of the note at all. It's still a crotchet. Okay. So that roll crotchet is rolling from there to there. So that has to be a 13. One, two. So let me get my black pen. It's going to be one, two. Okay. This group of notes here, semiclavers, are going to be two E and A, because they're semiclavers, two E and A. So I'm going from a 13 stroke roll up to there. One, two E and A. Which is very funky. All right, and the two E and A, as you can see by looking at it, is right, left, right, right. So that's a paradiddle. So I'm doing a 13 stroke roll, straight into a paradiddle. So I'm getting hickety dickety paradiddle. And if you're clever, you'll see this second group is actually the exact same. All I've done is swapped hands. So that is my crotchet. There's my paradiddle. The exact same as that crotchet and that paradiddle. The only difference is I've swapped hands. So there's my first group, second group, third group, fourth group. All right, so there's my four beats per bar. And every single one of them is equal in that crotchet that we were saying before, or the quarter note, all right? And you might be thinking, well, how can a crotchet be a group? It's on its own. Well, it's a group because it's the exact beat per bar. So I remember every bar needed to equal four crotchets. All right, there's my first one, there's my second one, there's my third, there's my fourth. If I've got a crotchet on its own, nothing else can go in that beat. All right, that is the full beat taken care of straight away. All right, so therefore it's on a group on its own. So let's rub out that. And I've got two quavers there. I've just made it a flam and a flam. So again, you're not counting the flams when you're counting the notes. You're just counting these, which is two clavers. So it's got a beam. <coughs> it tells you that it's clavers. That one's clavers as well. That's a crotchet. That's a crotchet. And again, I'm looking at them before I look at any of that above it. All right, I'm not looking at whether it's a roll, a flam, or whatever it is. I'm looking at the note values. All right, so I know straight away these two quavers added together equal a crotchet. There's a crotchet there. There's a crotchet there. Two quavers added together equal a crotchet. So there's one, two, three, four crotchets, which gives me what I need. All right, I'm going rad circling that. All right, but every single bar needs to equal that. So it's gave me exactly what I need. All right, so when I'm writing it, it adds up perfectly to the beat per bar. Okay, or the amount of beats per bar. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to send you all this bit of music or this blank bit of music. All right, because I think it would be quite cool for you to have every line. All right, so you can see what we've done today. Like so the three four, underneath you could potentially copy it out. Obviously, a lot neater than I've just attempted to scribble it. All right, but if you've got this music, you can play about with it and copy it out. 
You could put rolls on these, you could put flams on them, you could do what you want, you could make it funky and give it a name. Uh, you could theoretically give this all these notes, change them about, give the tune a name. Um, well, I'm just going to write my smelly feet. All right, just for a bit of fun. All right, so I've just named that tune my smelly feet. If you messed about with them, you could give it any name you want. All right, because it became your tune, and I'm just doing this really quick. All right, I've just made that. Now it's probably going to sound awful. All right, but I've just messed about with that, and that shows me or shows you how easy it is to write music. All right, and again, this is quite a lot to take in, but it's surprisingly easy. All right, when you get used to it and you spend a bit of time doing it. Okay. So again. Please don't stress, all right? Don't be thinking, oh my God, this is really tricky, all right? It is a wee bit tricky initially, all right? And give me a wee set and I'm gonna stop sharing the screen on my iPad, if I can figure out how to do it. In fact, what I might do is I'm gonna pin myself to the screen as I figure out how to stop sharing. So the minute I stop sharing, I'm gonna pop up on the screen like that. <laughs> so there I am. All right. So I have been um, been here the whole time, writing on my iPad. All right. So as I said before, that gives you a really good understanding of not only the theory behind writing music, like we did earlier. All right, because I've done it with you. All right, and it all it gives you a shot. On, of how to write the music with your beams, using the ruler, using your dabber pen. I'll send this sheet to you. All right, this is the sheet that we used when I was writing on the iPad. I think that's a good shout for you to have. Um, print it out and just copy it. Um, I'll also send you music that you can use at home where you would just copy out what you see. If you feel confident and comfortable, then copy out your own music. All right, have a go at copying your own music and see see how you get on. All right, because you might find that it's actually easier than you think. You know, you might really enjoy it. If you're really not getting it and not understanding it, ask me. Please ask me. You don't have to ask me just now, all right, because I need to go get my tea. All right, but ask away. I'm quite happy to explain in class, all right, at school, and we can I can bring in loads of music like this, loads of black music, and we can just write music and just try and see how we get on with it, okay? So I'm gonna leave it at that. It's past half five, um, I enjoyed that. I always enjoy writing music, um, and I'll be in touch and let you know what we'll cover in our next lesson, all right? So I'll see you all when I see you, and I hope you enjoyed that. Bye.